what up what up what up everybody so today we have an awesome opportunity to bring on uh, a poet for today but one of the things that i want to talk about first is that hey this is a new year this is going to be a new you so i want to make sure that you have everything you need to be successful all right so before we get uh take a deep dive into poetry and also talking about your blessings and also how to actually publish your own stuff let's go on and take a listen to the intro and then we'll be right back, okay? Talk to you guys soon. Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting show. I'm your host, Anthony Weaver, where we help you build strong financial habits. This podcast is strictly about your lifestyle, not just your finances. And I just want to help bring things to light as you come through. So I have the awesome opportunity to bring on special guest for the live show. Uh, name is Dwight, and he is the right warrior. Welcome to the show, sir. How you doing today? How you doing today? Salutations, blessings, one love to everyone. And thank you for this wonderful opportunity. We are in between the leap year and the full year. So it's kind of like we have an extra day to be grateful, an extra day to be holy. Awesome. So, you know, you want to go ahead on and start off with your poem, just kind of kick it right off, see what people oh. know about you definitely so one of the things i've realized is in life we are faced with different challenges different crises and each crisis gives us the ability to choose which path to follow it's hard to be a christian read that at the age of 13 i came down with the pox burning up like gasoline. I couldn't use my voice box to say the hole in my socks was bigger than the room I was sleeping in, but smaller than the lie I was living in with a father who didn't bother to speak with me, except it was to say not to use profanity. All he gave to me was a Bible outlined in red. So I was speaking in tongues from the head instead of being dead. Beep, beep, beep. Last summer, another brother died and I cried, thinking of all those who refused to let Christ inside. I have a slide of his broken body on my laptop to remind me of where I would be if I ever stopped and dropped. What's hard? living a life without Jesus Christ or God, a life where everyone thinks that you are odd and should be beaten with a rod or a stick or slippers or church shoes or electric cord or tree branch or Timberland boots, if you have one. I have yet to see a saint or a sinner escape the light of the sun. I salah. It's hard to be a Christian. Read that. Nice, 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 nice. So, you know, got to get that, got to get that, got to get that. Um, because one of the things that, you know, I like that that poem. Um, what inspired you to, to write poetry? Well, from a very young age, my mom had me reading different books, and she read to me also bedtime stories. And my father, for all his faults, was a great education believer, and he bought the collection of the Encyclopedia Britannica. And for oh, those yeah, of you who are not familiar, back in the day, you had mm -hmm. physical books that you would buy from A to Z. There you go. Flashbacks. Throwback mm -hmm. Thursday. Let's get it. And get so it. I read the entire series um, by, I guess, maybe 10 or 11. 
I then read uh, the Bible in its entirety by 13 years old, and then J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and Silmarillion by the time I was 14 years old. And this poem I wrote when I was 13, and it's a longer piece, you know, and it captures how I felt being sick and questioning why is this happening to me, right? And understanding my faith in God is something that's not just ephemeral, but it's also tangible. And mm -hmm. that's when I started writing more, entering different competitions with the Rotary Club and Kiwanis Clubs and winning with storytelling and essays and so forth, you know, and the journey continued. Yeah, because I know telling a story is something that's that doesn't come easy. And, you know, it's not just that you're telling the story, but how you uh, crafting that story so that it could captivate the people. And what they say is that it's not who's right, it's who's tell the best story. So crafting that story around everything um what pretty much is is your muse if that makes sense oh no definitely so one of the things i do now i do journaling mentorship right uh, folks who want to tap into professional development personal development and they're like listen i'm struggling at work i'm smart i'm educated i know my job but there's some elements it's either the politics at work or it's the interpersonal communication or it's the expressing myself with what i want there's a problem and we go back to one thing right what is your voice where is your voice like what is your choice within yourself and so that storytelling comes from what do you like to do you know we have a joke um in our artist circle about ai we said two things are going to happen when it comes to the AI and technology and humanity. Either human beings will be around the fire, cooking, having a blast, having a fun time, because we have allowed machines to do most of the work for us, and we have more leisure time to tell stories around the fire. Or human beings will be around the fireplace, the same fire, but now we're crouching in fear and we're wearing tattered clothing because we're running from Terminator type robots and so forth, trying to get us, you know? So the same fire is central to both stories, but the circumstances is different. And that's the beauty of storytelling. Every human being's journey is to find their voice. So the reason why we might like a particular actor or sports team is because we see in them the qualities that we aspire to or the qualities that we have. And so we say, I like this person that role. You know, I like Denzel in the Equalizer movies because I could see myself if I was so trained trying to live a quiet life and people try to mess with me, I'm going to give them a chance. But then I'm going to turn my watch on and I'm going to get busy. You know, so that aspect of knowing what do you like what do you feel like expressing how do you choose the voice you use is where the storytelling comes from and once you find your voice once you understand how to express yourself both in situations and on paper then your storytelling becomes you you might be quirky you might be telling dad jokes and corny jokes or you might be a serious style of storytelling but it's yours and that's what's important we need your voice your value is important because every one of us is unique we're connected but we're unique and that uniqueness is that is what we need yeah one of the i mean the uniqueness is there but like like you said it's just how do we craft it but also you gave us a setting of crouching around the fire um, and I was thinking about we will get lost in our stories and will our stories become so monotonous because we're not outside anymore. And because we're inside, the only stories that we can tell are the, the tales of time of how, you know, how it used to be the good old days. You know, you yeah. started off talking about, um, you know, <laughs> about the uh, nostalgia of, of some of the stories. And it's like, man. 
how can we how can we start building out our new stories the the new concepts the new constructs of, of storytelling um can you talk about the different types of stories that are out there um because i know you write a lot of poetry oh, yeah. but what is the the different types of poetry that uh kind of resonate with you the most so for me i'm a gospel poet right and what that means mm -hmm. is my faith is intrinsic to how I perceive the world and how I write. So, but the beauty about gospel poetry is similar to gospel music. So I used to be a gospel music DJ back in the day and there's gospel rock, gospel rap, there's traditional gospel, there's Caribbean gospel, there's reggae gospel, there's gospel rap and gospel poetry and everything. So there's a wide variety to choose from. And that is something that exists with storytelling you know, and with poetry. So for example, uh, you can focus on just describing mother nature. Mm. You know, I have a poem called Petrichor. And Petrichor is a word that means the smell and sound of the atmosphere after rain, very specifically that particular moment. So when the rain has fallen, has fallen and it's finished falling, and you open your door, you step outside, like you said, and you inhale, it's a little bit of dirt mixed with some ozone, a little bit of crushed leaves, and a little bit of freshness. That's petrichor. I wrote a poem about that. So being able to see and interpret Mother Nature is one style of poetry, one manner of storytelling. And you'll see, for example, in Lord of the Rings, they spend half the time in the books and the movies walking in different landscapes. If yeah, they were they not do. in the mountain and snows, they were in the valleys with grass. So, you know, they were about to cross a river. So nature is a fundamental part of it. And then you have the, the science fiction lovers where it's about the, you know, the stars in the sky and the solar radiation and the different cloud layers and the ozone and the stratosphere and so forth. And these is the celestial bodies that we want to talk about. You know, whether it be horoscope, astrology, or astronomy, or space travel, SpaceX, you know, what is Elon Musk doing now? You know, is he alien or is he human? You know. Thank you. Pause there for a little bit. Did we lose you? I think we lost you a little bit. Um, well, we're going to keep you up there until we figure this out. I'm going to put on some, uh, look like we got some technical difficulties. Just hold tight. technical difficult that's the reason why you gotta have everything set up you know what i'm saying that's, <laughs> that's what we're gonna do right. <laughs> no that's classic and i saw that graphic too that graphic was epic oh thanks sir. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things i want to also illustrate is poetry and storytelling is about painting a picture it's about describing things so one of my exercises that i try to teach folks when it comes to writer's block right yes, which is a misnomer yes. because if you understand writer's block, and this is a, a two-part segment. So writer's block is about something is blocking your purpose. The reason why you're writing, the reason why you're singing, the reason why you're dancing. Writer's block is you being disconnected from the source. So mm -hmm. what you have to figure out is, am I stressed? Is it a deadline I'm trying to meet that's causing pressure on me? Is it that I'm not inspired enough, right? So 
that's the mental spiritual aspect of it now the technique that you use is if you're writing intensely whether it be for your novel or for a newspaper article or for a college essay you pause where you are and you do a simple exercise this is one of the the many i always employ take a pen and paper and you just look around where you are and you find one thing and you describe it Mm. as simple as that so here i have a mouse and i would just start saying it's black it's shiny it's round it has uh, some dots on the side and so forth you know so that re-engages your mind but in a simple manner and then you describe something else again you know describe where you are in the living room or in the bedroom or in your office and you describe it and that reignites the juices and get you flowing and that's one method of finding how to overcome writer's block and tell your story you describe what's happening describe how you feel and that in turn goes with how you're doing today yeah so can you as the expert, I was just saying the expert in this room right now because it's just you and I. Yeah, I'm not... <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> what is what will be no, uh, what will be the best way to kind of just start your story? Because a lot of people probably start with, well, I don't know what the first sentence. Usually, that first word can kind of make or break the story. How would you first formulate the story, like a, a short short poem okay, or so... a story? So, so here is like the interesting process. You have different schools. You remember back in the day, we used to watch the, uh, the Kung Fu flicks, right? The Kung yep. Fu karate movies, every different schools fighting against each other mm-hmm. in writing that somewhat exists. Like some people will say, listen, I cannot write anything unless I write an outline of what I want yeah. to say, you know, and other folks will be like, no. I have to be inspired and feel the rhythm and feel the rhyme and just go crazy with the pen on the paper. What I say is this, the way we write is how we want to fulfill our purpose, right? So if you know that you're writing a love letter to your wife, uh, you're writing a poem to your children, right? The end goal you have is that they will receive something that will speak to them even if you're not there even if you don't say all the right words but they'll understand because they know you and they feel your love through the paper so you start writing you give yourself a space where you say okay i'm going to write within this length and you start off as you feel and you can start with action i was walking down the street and I thought of you. Mm. I was thinking of our love, whether if it's false or true, you know, and again, you don't have to rhyme. You don't have to have a cadence or pattern, but the very act of writing it down is poetry because you're capturing a truth of the universe and bring it down to the point of your pen. And that is the essence of poetry. You're taking a full concept and putting it into the pen and paper. Because remember, we are vocal beings, you know, talking is in some aspects more important than writing. What writing does is allows you to put your words onto paper so other people can share them. In the publishing industry, we call that distribution. Mm -hmm. You know, the distribution is important. So once you have it written down, you can give your poem to other people, your story to the next agent or the next screenplay writer or Tyler Perry Studios, and they make a big production for you because you wrote it down. You have to think right. big, right? So one of my always elevator pitches is if ever I'm walking around town, you know, uh, going to the elevator on a plane, and I meet Issa Rae, and I'll be like, Issa Rae, first of all, insecure you're doing your thing <laughs> yep. perfect yeah i have a, a great concept though and i'll go straight into my story concept i have for her 
And she'll be like, mm, maybe talk to my people, whatever the case may be, but you got to be ready. And the story you have, once you have the space that you plan to tell the story, just tell the story. And you know the end goal, I want to have either a movie or I want to have a play or I want to see a smile on my children's faces. I want my wife to enjoy a cup of tea, smell her rose and read my poem and say happy anniversary, five years in, let's keep on going. So you've got to have a goal going into your storytelling and then fill the space that you assigned for yourself. And that's why I love the family memoir project, you know, mm. which is basically go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to actually talk about it because I've heard about it, but I, um, the concept is really interesting. So, right. So this is exactly how it is. And again, thank you for having me on about that wallet podcast, because it's a vibe and it's about sharing the thank knowledge. You, thank you. Yeah. With today's technology that we have. Right. So. I spoke to authors who have been publishing books for the past 40, 50 years and some new cats. And the world has changed. Forget about COVID for a second. Like in the past 10 years, from 2014 to now, we have gone from like standing still to running full out. We have technology, industry, we have communication, we have trade blocks, we've had wars, we've had gas prices jump from like a dollar forty nine to four dollars and change, you know, it's nearly a madhouse. And with technology, what you have is the ability to in four steps, right? The first step is you record your elders. So the uncle who always tells you story about how oh, I was the first person to help build a train station in the city, you know, <laughs> to the grandma sure. who has a beautiful blueberry pie recipe. You know, you record their stories. That's number one. The number, the second step is you transcribe everything to Microsoft Word. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Google Docs, you are not it. Okay. It's Microsoft uh, Word. That's what you need. Yes, sir. I do apologize. Hurt feelings about, okay. but Google Docs is not it. You need the format and power of Microsoft Word and you transcribe everything into a nice table of contents format with the style. Mm -hmm. So you have chapters and oh, yeah, yeah, page. Yeah. There you go. Word, See, word you got it. Yeah, about. word got it. Nope. Yep. Come on now. Okay. And <laughs> then so that's the second step. You know, you format the, the document with chapters and you do your proofreading, the editing, etc. Then the third step, distribution. You now can upload this finished manuscript to Amazon, to Barnes & Noble's Press, to Ingram Sparks, all these companies have behind the scenes printing companies that allow you to do print on demand, which is once you upload the document, once it's beautiful and it's structured and it's processed properly and accepted, now you can just click a button and order one copy for yourself. So the third step is distribution uploaded to Amazon, Barnes and Noble's Press. Now the fourth step is straightforward. As an author of record, It'll cost you like maybe five bucks to order a copy for yourself. Right. So now once you have your copy. Yeah, yeah, we know. Come on now. <laughs> come on now. Show and tell, baby. All <laughs> day. Let's get yep. it. Show and tell. Oh, yeah. We, you know, we want to so, say this this episode is uh sponsored by uh Amazon KDM. I mean KDP. Just go ahead KDP, on and, uh, come on now. Yeah, just go on and get it up in there. It's free. Well, yeah, it's free to use. Like it's a no-brainer. That's no -brainer. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So up to this point, you have not spent any money, right? Yeah. So now the fourth step is you can just go into your author's account. You order your author's copy for five bucks approximately. And let's say you're doing this family memoir for the family reunion. Uh, you have uh, 50 people coming. You yeah. purchase 50 copies. 50 mm -hmm. times five is 250. If you want to have your cousins and them pay or give you some money, whatever you want to do. And then you surprise everyone from grandma, come right down to the nieces and nephews. You have a family memoir book, which mm. basically has some pictures, has some stories, and it has a little family tree so you can see who did what. And it's a beautiful gift, not only for the elders, but also 
for your children, for your nieces and nephews, for your cousins. You know what I'm saying? We have to own our product. Here in South Florida, the governor is banning books and they're removing books from the yeah, schools. Yeah, yeah, so you control your history. You have the technology now to capture your story, edit it. Oh, uh, we uh, think we got a little, little misconnect here. So it's just me, you guys. Uh, so while we have a little bit of technical difficulties going on right now, um, until he comes back in to view, uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun. So one of the things that's going on right now that we were just talking about, if you haven't already, go ahead on and go to the about that wallet.com forward slash shop you actually will be able to get some of the merch that I have on my store and you'll be able to kind of walk around town with it. You'll be able to have the ability to go ahead on and, you know, support the show. I will definitely love to see you inside some of the attire that we have. So we have everything from some underwear. We have shirts. We have Oh, man, I can't even believe it. But we have bucket caps, you know what I'm saying? Like bags that I use for conferences and everything like that. So you cannot go wrong by checking out the aboutthatwallet.com forward slash shop. So you can go ahead on and get some merch today. All right, let's get back to it. Hey. Blessing salute. Welcome back, sir. Tell you what, you're going to have to do a lot of editing. (laughs) Thank you so much for it. Oh, this is live, man. I'll edit these. I don't edit these. This is going to go straight. <laughs> <laughs> so, I man. love that. Human first design. Love it. Yeah. So um, in conclusion, though, with that point, so now you have this wonderful, beautiful book. I skipped over the part about making a beautiful cover, right? Because, for example, yeah, yeah. this cover is me taking a picture at the riverside, right? And then mm-hmm. my other book, this cover is me uh, in the Florida Everglades having a staring contest with a alligator. <laughs> you know, so them is wow. the vibes right there. Come on now. Yeah, talk so, about the pivot. Yeah, I mean, I'll you pivot so, the other way. Yeah, too. beautiful book product. Yeah. Oh, no, I was saying because you were staring at a... Um, Come on now. At an like, alligator, ooh, yeah. What's going on? So, and that's just it. We have to be on a journey for ourselves. Yeah, with technology to just tell our story because no one can tell our story for us. And they might even try to take away our story. You know, we have, for example, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Black Wall Street, Green- Greenwood in 1921. You know, um, I saw a clip where Tom Hanks was saying he just found out about it uh, last year. You know, when one of the survivors yeah. who was 100 plus years old died, you know, like mm-hmm. that's that should be common knowledge. You know, the only way we could understand the past is by embracing the past and make better decisions in the future. Right. And one of the things that the bombing of, that they keep bringing up that one, there were over a hundreds of, well, I'll say not hundreds. I will say at least 20, at least 20 different um, bombings across the, the United States during that time frame. So like the Moors bombing that was in, uh, what do you call it? Philadelphia. So, you know, they don't talk about mm. that one too much. So, you know, it's like one of those of, of many. So you have the, how can I say, if we constantly living in the past, how can we actually foresee the future? And because we have way more past than we do future at this point. Like the, the, the past is already in stone. It's, it's set and done. What, we can do is actually start looking into the future and looking at how fragile our future is because you never know tomorrow could be your day but without actually having the opportunity to really learn your story and taking the time out if you got the tools right now you thinking about doing something just do it um we just talked about like using amazon to kind of hurry up and get your story out there i mean i use canva i mean i didn't use uh, you know microsoft word 
but Canva was nice and easy to me. Um, <laughs> and right now I'm actually working on making the complimentary there you go. book to it. So you actually have something to read along with it to to make this happen. So that's the reason why I wanted to to bring you on mostly is because you've been through that journey several times and you know you've written so many stories and that's one of the things that i, I want to kind of captivate is that um capture what it is to to make a good story and to keep the people listening and not just listening one time but to come back and actually share it to somebody else so what do you find has been helpful to keeping the audience engaged For all of us, we have different aspects of our mental health and spiritual journey, right? And one of the things I've come to realize is for me, vulnerability is strength. So in other words, the more I accept what I'm not good at, the more I accept that I'm imperfect and trying to adjust and change and I'm trying to become a better person, become Christ-like as the ocean is the more, more I get more focus and resonate with people because everyone has a struggle. Everyone is trying to get somewhere, trying to grow, trying to elevate, trying to be a better lover, a better fighter, uh, more studios to get better grades. Some can be a little tricky sometimes. So for me, in embracing what I've been through and understanding that sometimes my mistakes is for others to see and learn and my triumphs is for them to see and learn also. And when it comes to the audience, there's different, different levels of, of interacting with people, different levels of reading the room, so to speak. You know, I've been in situations professionally where I was the only person of color and the only male in the room, you know, mm. and you just have to know what is your voice, who is your voice, you know, and can you maintain and stand up, as they say, stand on business in any crowd, any situation. You know, I have a poem called Code Switch. And if you know yep. what Code Switch is, you know you do it all the time. You know, and so it's a part it, it's, of our nature at this point, especially in our culture. So reading the room. No, go ahead. Oh, uh, when it comes to like code switching, as I was thinking about that um, recently. Was that you go, to tell... say. go ahead. Well, I was saying is that like um, having cold switching, one of the things about cold switching is that if somebody doesn't cold switch appropriately, they consider that person crazy or are they not aware of their situation or they might have uh, Down syndrome or something like that. So I think everybody does it and everybody knows. So like you don't show up. I mean, it's not look well. I guess you could say if you're coming up to a funeral in jeans and a shirt and everything like that, or there or you, you showing up, or you showing up to um, to work out in a suit, like you know you you got to switch it up a little bit. Um, and this is just with the physical change of cold switching that I'm discussing, but there's obviously cold switching when it comes to just facial expressions. You can show up there and be like somebody's having a bad day or you're um, you seeing a fight happening and you're ex super excited. Like, should you be super excited? Like, you know, or something like that. Things happen and you should be able to kind of change appropriately. And I, I think that's one of the things that is a lost art. And if you can do it well, it could fare out well. You can actually make some money from that and keep your income so that's reason why i do love that that topic but also it's like how deep you can go into it you know what i'm saying did we lose you again man all right 
You there? Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead on and um, talk about cold switching a little bit. Uh, yes. So the last thing I heard from you was the cold switching. If you don't do it properly, it comes across extremely awkward or just you get labeled with a, a bad term. And that's a fact, you know, but that takes skill. That takes understanding of the environment, reading the room, knowing what the conversation is about, you know, uh, even something as simple as realizing that you go to a social event, for example, and there's tons of great food, but hardly anyone is eating. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like two things happening. Either you walked into a vampire convention or <laughs> folks are focusing on the food. They're focusing on networking and talking with others. You know, so something as simple as that can make a big difference. You're here with plates full of pigs in a blanket and croissants and so forth, and with crumbs and flicks all over your bed and your clothing, and other people are exchanging business cards, tapping on their device, doing QRC codes and so forth, you know? So yeah, you gotta be able to understand. And that observation skill mm -hmm. is what goes into your storytelling. What do you observe? What do you see around you? How do you describe the sound of a water drop running down the rooftop onto the ground? What is that sound? Yeah. Right? That takes delicacy, delicacy and, and time. And one of the greatest skills I always say, whenever I go on stage, whenever I'm an MC or I perform my poetry or I give a speech, and one day I'm going to have a TED talk. I'm just going to claim that. And I hope the same for you too, brother. You got to have a TED talk at some point or TEDx is the words you say matter. Yeah. But, but the spaces, the moments in between the words matter more. And that's what's important. So not the huge volume, the torrent, the deluge of words and endless stream of words and verbs and consonants and no, it's the pauses, the exhale, the inhale, let it sit. Do you know the best way to serve food is to let the meat marinate overnight? I yeah. can't say that enough. Yep. You want to do some ribs? Season those bad boys a couple of days before. You want to have some chicken? Season it. Vegetables, season it. You make an ital, which is a vegetarian dish of, of herbs and plantains and root vegetables. You season them, whether it is curry or paprika or saffron or herbs and spices, whatever you use, and let it sit. Let it sit and marinate. And that is how conversations are. So one tip I always give folks, especially a lot of artists tend to be introverts, right? Because yeah. we're so in tune with the universe and this amount of empathy that we feel, we just withdraw into ourselves and, and just receive the message or enjoy the moment. And then we look at our fellow human beings like strangers, slow it down. We live in a fast society with microwaves and with fast results and deadlines, which are arbitrary methods of keeping time. Just slow it down. I've been in meetings where my director asked me a question and I just pause. I look at her. I look at my notes, shuffle my paper. I already have the answer, but I just need time to give a good response that she can receive. And then I say X, Y, Z. And sometimes in life you do that, you know, arguments about to start, take a pause, take a breather, you know, road rage again. So first of all, with road rage, do not leave your vehicle. Let's establish that. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. but I'm driving a two ton vehicle, 2000 pounds. So two tons mm. is equal. No, is, is it one ton is 2,000 pounds, yeah. whichever the yep. case may be? Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. one is it? One okay. 1,000 pounds is one ton. There you go. So I'm going to leave my 2,000 pound vehicle to tussle with a person who weighs 200 pounds. Like, no, I'm going to stay in my vehicle. You stay in yours. 
And if it's that serious, wait for the relevant authorities to come. If not, we'll exchange insurance numbers and keep it trucking because no. Walking away. And that's the other thing when I say. Oh, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. You were right. It's uh, 2,000 pounds for one ton. I had to double check myself. There you go. Yeah, I was thinking. I know the number is different because. (laughs) And here's the crazy thing about being a nerd. The way I learned about pounds and tons was I was watching the reading a comic book with Spider Man. Mm-hmm. And they said he could lift a car, which is the equivalent of a ton, which is 2,000 pounds. And I was like, ah. hmm, pretty strong for a 16-year-old kid. Interested. So the point is, at the end of the day, you have to embrace the fact that your vulnerability might look like weakness to others, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how many times? I grew up in some rough neighborhoods, um, Opalaka, Carroll City, in Miami, South Florida, and, and the vibes is real. And a lot of times, I know for a fact, people who lost their lives or who got the situations, if they had just put ego aside and stepped back, like, trust me, I'm not a coward. I know how to fight, but I will step all the way back to avoid confrontation. All the way. You yeah. won't even see me. I'll fade mm-hmm. away like I was, you know, a ninja. You will not see me. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you can avoid situations, avoid confrontation, especially when it comes to work, right? When it comes to this corporate governmental superstructure that has elitism on one side and HR on the other side and the rank and file in the middle trying to figure out what system am I in? Is it a reward punishment system or is it a merit-based system, you know, and then the worst scenario, you depend on the individual supervisors to put their flavor into the management structure. Don't get me started on that. (laughs) (laughs) In the midst of all this, I know that's another stream altogether. In the midst of all this though, the individual must understand your goal is to maintain your peace. And when I wrote this book, it was the intention of showing how you find peace so for me peace is through poetry so i write a lot for you peace might be through working out peace might be through writing songs and singing once you find your peace right you find your peace whatever it looks like to you you expand it so you spread it outwards once you expand your peace you fortify it so you preserve it by understanding the boundaries you know some places you don't go, some people you don't talk to, family or friends. Don't be afraid to cut off people to maintain your sanity. I always tell people this. At the end of the day, if you need to sleep for eight hours in bliss, in freedom, cut people off, snip, snip, snip. And then you protect your peace, meaning that if something's coming in and you see it and you're like, that's not for me. You talk to God and he says, that's not for you. You're like, okay, easy, God, I got this. Hand check, shoulder check. No, oops, slip and slide, slip and slide. Because protecting your peace in today's world is so important. If you are not mentally focused and balanced, nothing you do will be successful because you're either too stressed to think properly, you're too bothered to sleep properly, and the worst one, you can't eat because your mind is just off balance and you're upset. Can you imagine that? You have a beautiful lobster mac and cheese in front of you and you can't touch it because you're stressed out. You know, your stomach keeps bubbling because you have anxiety about work or about going out into public or just talking to your mom or your father on the phone. That's a crazy vibe. So that mental peace is important for me peace is through jesus christ right and not yeah. the the image people have but it's personal faith is personal religion is a box faith is personal yeah um because one of the things that a lot of people i guess you could say with this fast-paced environment is um you already mentioned it which is taking time to slow down so at what age um, did you feel as though you noticed that having that pause in life 
was important to you? 2020. Mm. 2020, when everything shut down, illness, homelessness, job loss. Wow. And when you see the picture of me in the Everglades is looking, as my daughter says, I was contemplating my life choices. And the speed at which I went from running so fast and moving so fast, government, corporate ladder, promotions, working, organizing, event planning, raise, accommodation, accolades, and then just whoop, slow down, stop, full stop. I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, this is different. You know, I always had the ability to slow down, but I allowed circumstances, supervisors, the pressure of life to dictate my pace. And that's not the case. You dictate your pace because at the end of the day, your health is important. Your, your mental health is important. Your physical health, your, my prioritization is this. It's pretty straightforward. God or faith first. That's number one. Let me, let me go mm -hmm. higher so I can drop it down properly. Okay. Then you put yourself second. Then you put your family and then whatever business, whatever way you have of making money, put that last. And the reason why money is last because money will never make you happy. The trick is to find value. It depends. <laughs> no, it does depend, right? So, so to break it down, money makes things easier and affordable. Mm -hmm. But having millions of dollars in your bank account doesn't make you happy. If that was the case, there would be no millionaires committing suicide. Yeah, I mean, it. I would say it's. Um, I think you can say going back to what you're saying. Do you need to get that, or are you good? No. Okay. I have uh, people for that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> 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 that's uh, awesome. I but... <laughs> people, like, my, my daughter, my daughter. Has, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, she's on door duty. <laughs> okay. So one of the things that uh, I was thinking of is like, granted, money. If if we look at money as a tool and what it is, instead of it looking at it as our validation of happiness, and I think that's go. what get lost in in the whole conversation between does does money really make mm. you happy? Uh, it can make you forget a lot of things for sure, um, mm. but when it comes to realizing like, hey, you know, you have all this money, but nobody to share it with. What what are you really doing with it? And also it's like, can you still find your any inner peace with the million dollars? And a million dollars really isn't that much. Um, Compared, exactly. It's, yeah, because I'm like, at this point, I'm thinking to myself, a million dollars, like, can you, I mean, I'm looking at like a hundred, give me about like a hundred million. I think I'll be good. Facts, facts. You know, that'll be a little easier. Yeah, because <laughs> I want to have at least two franchises. You know, I want to have a, a Dunkin' Donuts franchise and a Spooty King franchise. Oh, nice. And they yeah. they complete opposites. Come on now. Like what they're gonna Listen. get fat and then waddle over to the <laughs> Spooty. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm diversifying my portfolio, okay? Not I'm, like <laughs> <laughs> I'm diversifying my portfolio. I'm gonna have the, the okay. health ones over here and then right. you know the ones who <laughs> indulge a lot over on this side. Don't get me started. What kind of gym am I going to have to? Your butt. <laughs> you got the gym. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have the gym. I'm like, oh both of you, 5% discount when you go to the gym. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> no, think about it. Get a smoothie. Get 5% plan. discount. There we go. Because what's going to happen is when you go to the gym, the folks yeah. who feel like so revved up, like, oh, my goodness, I'm meeting my goals. Let me go smoothie king and keep on this trend. And mm -hmm. the ones who are like, ooh, I met my goals. Now I can cheat a little bit. I'm going to go to Dunkin' Donuts. Come on now. Yeah, just put them in the same building. <laughs> just <laughs> Like, you know what? As you leave, you, you got to make the right choice. See what I'm saying? Just make the right choice. <laughs> and that, oh, you know what? That would be funny. That would be the name of your uh, of your gym. 
It's called Make the Right Choice. <laughs> oh, man. Did we lose you again? You good? Ah. All right. Well, I'm laughing myself. I'm having fun. I th- I still think it'll be great to have such a um Okay, here we go. Back in again. There you go. Cool. All right. Yeah. I, was, choice. I love that. Yeah. I was just messing up stuff, but I was just think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and but you what know what? Our... I'm gonna be so mad. Yeah. I was gonna say I'm gonna be so mad if like a year from now someone comes up with this same concept. You know, so for example, uh, both Taco Bell and Pizza Hut are owned by Yum Foods, mm-hmm. right? So that's basically sometimes you have the drive through that says both Taco Bell and Pizza Hut. You know, um, I'll be so mad if, if next year we see a, a little building that has a gym and then the other two quarters or two franchises, a Smoothie King, and, a, and the whole thing is called Make the Right Choice. Oh my, they owe me some some ducats yeah. for that. So go ahead. Right. Yeah, we might have to. Um, we might have to. Uh go through that trademark process and be like yeah uh uh this is trademark, there we go. Jim. right <laughs> 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 so you know far as you know we talked about um you know poetry we talked about publishing we talked about your purpose um but i want to start digging yeah. into you know, you personally, because we, we're going to dive, dive a little bit more into your purpose and your lifestyle, because this is a lifestyle podcast. So what um, what was your finances, if you could talk about that 2020, how that hit you and what uh, kept you going and how you're able to get out of that? So the good thing was right before COVID happened in 2020, I think it was maybe 2016, 2017. Um, It was like my 10th year into working at the government. We did a, what we call a JAQ, a job analysis questionnaire. And Mm. the purpose was, this was in Broward County. The county realized that their pay scale and their job titles were different than their neighbor to the South Miami-Dade and their neighbor to the north, West Palm Beach County. And Broward is a very much a trendsetter type of, you know, government structure. So they hired a consultant, they paid about maybe seven to $10 million for this consultation firm to come in and analyze all of their employees, their job functions and their job titles and the pay scales. First of all, paying a consultation for $7 million I'm like, you could take that $7 million and divide it to all the employees, but neither here nor there. That's another book I'm working on. Mm-hmm. So what came out from that was they looked at my report and they said, this is impossible what you do, right? That you're doing all this within the eight hours because I was an executive assistant. I was a administrative specialist. I was a project manager. I was facilities maintenance. I was Hawking shelter management. I was a PCOT controller. I was doing the travel reporting. I was managing spreadsheets. I was in charge of the lead of the office support staff. We had a front desk that we managed. So I was doing everything. Asbestos, a basement, everything you could think of. And they're like, this is impossible. I said, no, this is what I did. So when COVID happened in 2020 and my finances were just shut down, no steady paycheck coming in. I had all my documents because I'm a meticulous record keeper. And I realized if the government can pay me $25 an hour to do all of these things, I can break down what I do as a skill and charge $75 an hour. Mm, I right? see you're gonna, so, yeah. so now, for example, I write business plans, organic business plans for small businesses and big companies. And I charge between 550 just to edit what you already have, what you're giving me. But if you are giving me nothing, just your funding requirements, and then the name of your company, I have to do all the research into your local target market, your financial projections, $2,000 easy. Because now I already know it's going to take me like 10 to 15 hours to put everything together, format, 
research, make some phone calls. So when I calculate that plus the value of what I'm bringing to the table, I'm like 2K, bet. If you don't like it, cool. Find some place else that's either cheaper or more expensive. Um, you know, and that's where I started maneuvering through Fiverr and Upworks. And then I'm like, hold on, I'm paying them 20%, right? Mm -hmm. So if I just go independent and just say, work with me directly, you know, and just set up a system with some contracts, um, some email communication systems also, some follow-ups, and there you go. We produce the work and we get paid for it. So now my only goal is to get more consistency, more clients in, and then start to scale up because the way I do it is teachable. You mm -hmm. know, I teach people when you come to me as a client, as a customer for either a book project or a business plan or a brand or social media, it's not that I don't like you, but I don't want to see you again. Right. You know, there's too much information out there. I'm just showing you my way, my technique. Once you learn it, have fun. I got more people to talk to and to train and to get paid from. You know, now if you want to come back and hire a ghostwriter, now we're talking good money. You know, and of course, as a ghostwriter, I can't talk about it. But right. the point is, you want to build some kind of legacy that you can keep generating income over time. That's why books are good. You don't make money from them, like what they talk about or falsely advertise. But the small drops in the bucket that helps you build up your credibility, helps you establish your name. And then you get the ability to start charging for speaking fees and for appearances and for book signers and to this date i've sold more copies of my book out of the trunk of my car than online because when i go places and i talk to people mm -hmm. yeah i'm like listen you want this book oh it's a good book you gonna like it matter of fact here you go read it for five minutes if you like what you read you support the cause you know i'll autograph it for you yep. put a nice little form in there you know and there you go and that's one of the things i think it's uh, a lot of people forget that Business is really a relationship business because say like how you and I chat now and I'm like, all right, cool. I have a speaking gig coming up. Say if I'm coming down to Florida and I was like, hey, I know somebody in Florida. I give you a call. Be like, hey, would you mind coming on for like, you know, just to kind of walk like a uh, do my intro for me. Intro, you come you in go. and Easy. do your intro for like, you know, a couple of 10 minutes or something like that. I slide you a little something, or even if you decide to do it for free. And then, you know, we work business that way to kind of help get everything going. And like, That's we can it. break a deal that way. And it's like, it's too easy out here. And it's, and I think that's one of the things that a lot of people forget. It's like, so I think about like watching movies. You always see the same people in the same movies. It's like, well, Facts. because they know each Facts. other. Like, yes, <laughs> you know, they're not going to let somebody else in. Everybody trying to eat too, like their friends. It was like, hey, why don't you put me on? You know, I could play that part easy. Um, or somebody's wife or director's wife is in the got a scene or something like oh my that. Word. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's a, one of my greatest um, folks to look at is um, Adam Sandler. Yeah. You know, when, when he first signed that deal with Netflix, people were like, oh my goodness. He's given up all that ability to make movies. I'm like, no, he's mm -hmm. thinking ahead. He's lying. And in. he's not made a bad movie since. And he keeps on hiring his boys um, from Kevin yep. to um, the, the other cats. You know what I'm saying? like His daughter, his whole family, actually. Uh, the la and that last movie was brilliant. I can't remember the name of it. Leo. But yeah, you're right. The kid there show, Leo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The entire Sandler clan was in that movie. Yeah. And it was a beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is what legacy is about. That's why I always recommend folks in a family, you must have a clearly identified matriarch or patriarch who is the head of the household. Now, the mafia had a great, very great concept. They gave the, the power and the authority to the oldest person. Yep. You know, whenever you see how they operate, it's the 90 year old grandma who is behind the scenes being the arbitrator of the peace and make sure everyone stays on the right track and they respect each other and so forth. That concept of family and leadership is so important. Now, not advocating criminality, not that aspect, but just the being structure. able, yeah. just having a structure because here's the thing. 
you can't go into business with family members unless you clearly identify who does what and what expectations are. Even with myself, I've been writing books for about four years now since COVID started. And mm -hmm. I know for a fact, my family members, most of them, extended family, do not purchase or support my books. You know, it's the point where I can hear people talking about they want to start a book project, but no one's approaching me, right? Mm. So that tells me, A, they know something where they want to get it done because they see me doing it, but they don't want to commit to my process for whatever reason. And in that aspect, who's the head of the household? You know, right. and if you don't have a head of household, it's hard to construct a family business. So you got to have a relationship first. You got to understand who is what. Listen, the uncle who drinks a lot, obviously, he's not going to be the driver of the trucks. That's a given. <laughs> True. And the aunt who all the male cousins said touched him inappropriately, she shouldn't be involved in the family business. Yeah. Because that's a contradiction, you know. So now we'll go talk about the past traumas. The cousin who you know is suspect for whatever reason, let's talk about it. Because too many times the family is willing to sacrifice one or two members for an appearance of being a good family. No, yeah. we are about to enter business and we have to make sure because money is not going to fix the family problems. You know, you have families like the the Rothschilds who were able to maintain their family legacy and maintain their monies, right? Yep. But then you have the other families whose name we don't even know anymore who lost their money within one generation. So that is the reason why money management is so important and having a structure and family, having a family business is important. Unless you have the structure, the family business won't work. Unless you have the relationship, the family business won't work. You might as well just go solo. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the, I mean, I know we can run off into a whole nother tangent. Um, right. <laughs> because this one, because this is a touchy topic that I always have. It's like um, when it comes to most uh, people of color businesses is that they usually only one deep because they're afraid to give up the power. And for me on the other end, I'm like, y'all can have this. Like, let me go into my next venture. Because that's one of the things I, I set this podcast set up is so that it could be Thank sold. You. Um, so that's why it's like, it's not, yeah, it might be my initials, but my name isn't plastered all over it. I just happen to be the face of it for now. And then what I'm going to do is I can easily replace my, my, my face of it because it's not like, you know, some other people who do their shows, it was like, oh, this is my show or talking money with me, whatever their name is, insert name here. And one of the reasons why I didn't do that was because so in case somebody wants to buy or look at or evaluate my business and say like, hey, you know, we'll pay you. If somebody come along and say like, you know, we'll pay $500,000 for your brand. I was like, all right, cool. You can have it. It's fine. So it's up for there sale for anybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I already got the trademarks. Yeah, I already got the trademark done. Got the website, everything like that. So you got the full package locked in. I just want to take, go. make sure I get my guests, my uh, email list. See, there you go. And that is so true. I've always said this. If you build something, at what point are you willing to sell it and what amount? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And because when you do a book, for example, it's a business card into your ecosystem. It's yep. not just a book that stands alone. So, you know, in four years, when you have a book popping, you have merch, you have website, you have, you know, this platform that has your, your brand and your logo, and someone says, you know, like um, Viacom or Microsoft Activision, they say, hey, listen, we like what you got. We seize it, we want it, and we'll pay <laughs> for it. <laughs> we'll pay for it, yep. <laughs> You know, and then it's up to you to decide. And I think that's something that we don't, as business people, as entrepreneurs, we don't see the end picture. We're supposed mm -hmm. to look at. So I'm doing a, in a couple, actually in an hour or so, 
I'm going to be doing like a series of different live on different platforms, LinkedIn, Vigo, Instagram, maybe, and Twitter, where the premise is, see you in four years. Because mm. this is a leap year. This is a leap day. Where will you be? Oh, it is now? leap day. Oh, my gosh. There you go. About it. There you go. <laughs> and that's the question. I did nothing yeah. on, the, on the flyer. It just says it's a black background with the red and white words. See you next year. And I'm going to just go hop on and just rant and rave and talk a little bit about four years ago, we were in the middle of COVID. Um, it was just beginning to be a reality. Businesses were shutting down. And then we're four years here today. Four years from now, where will you be? What will your business look like? What will you look like? What will your family look like? Because that's the ability of humanity. Human beings, we can dictate and make a choice to be something. Well, um, the only thing about that, though, because four years is a long time. Very and long you saw, time. You saw how quickly you change your whole mindset and pivot everything within a year. So within, within three months, within, within three, three months, months, right? I was, I was so, ready to go. Like, when you're focused, you can knock it out. So you might have that four year plan, but because you actually took time out to write it down, you'd be surprised you can knock it out within a couple months. There you and go. It's like there you probably had you probably been sitting on this for a minute, be like, Yeah, man, I hope I had some time. Only if I had this uh so something to to get we'll me going. Pump it. Yep, right. yep, yep. <laughs> And then next thing you know, like, hey, when when times are tough, you'll find a way. You will find a way. Necessity is the mother of invention. And that's a true adage. Because only when you are up against the wall will you learn new tricks, unfortunately. See, I, I like how you said necessity. I always use restrictions. Mm. Reads innovation. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. you know, like, because at work... You know, when every when you have ample amount of staff, everybody just doing their own thing, just having a free lot of gagging all this free time. <laughs> but then you realize, oh, they start cutting people left and right. Ooh, and like it used to team used to be ten. Up. Yeah, yep. they only got like three people. You were like, oh, yeah, we need some system in place. We need this. Yeah, we need yeah that. automation. Like, <laughs> that's automation. We need some cloud based system going on because right. we are entering data by hand. No, thank you. I want to scan a document. See it mm -hmm. transferred into both Excel <laughs> and a PDF and send a, an email at the same time. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Instead of having one person sitting there doing, oh, yeah, this is an Excel expert. This is the email, no. your data entry. No. Like, yeah, we yeah. don't need you anymore. Yeah. No. So and, I would say this would be interesting. No, speaking of that, and that is exactly what happened during the JQ, they realized that a lot of the individual job titles had already overlapped into other roles and functions because what happened over time, the county let people go or people retired and they never replaced them by hiring new mm. people. They replaced them with a person who was there and they said, oh, by the way, you have this job and they put a stack of files on your desk. Oh, by the way, you're doing this now on Tuesdays. You know, so now you turn around and you're like, I am really doing the job of three people and get the pay of one person. Oh, one person. And don't get me started about working out of class. That's a whole nother topic <laughs> altogether. Don't get me started. I'm, I'm not, like I said, that's going to have to be a whole nother show. So you might have to come back. <laughs> You're going to have to go live with your, with your folks too next time. Um, and then we, we're going to have to just go talk about that right quick. But before we oh, go, yeah. I do want to share, um, you know, so those of you who are watching right now, I'm actually on Amazon checking out Dwight Thomas Thompson's books right now. You can go ahead on and get these books. They are up live and ready for your eyes. Hey, you like that? You know what I'm saying? I got my little snap Listen, phones. In it right <laughs> I was going to say, you drop a, a light ball right there. I wasn't expecting that, but I'm not surprised. So listen, here's the thing. So right now, the three books you want to get is called Pivot. That's P-I-V-O-T. That's a volume of the first five books. That's what upper left-hand corner or maybe okay. right-hand corner, depending on your orientation. You want to get the green cover book. That's called Inner Sanctum, Protecting My Peace Through Poetry. It's the poetry book, hardcore, 30 poems. Trust me, we go in. My life is a bomb with a five-ring alarm. 
one, mm. two, three, contact. Do you bodily harm? Do you catch where I'm coming from? As your life sense go critical, beep, beep, beep. Your hidden agenda becomes visible, physical, lyrical. My mission statement hit the pavement. If anybody asks, like FedEx, I was sent to leave a dent in this world, like an impact crater. I see the world for what it is, a baby shower. And then after that, you want to get the journal book, which is, is a black and white cover. And is also not that one, uh, the green one. Yeah. The other green one. Oh, okay. green yeah, one yeah. Says, yeah. Because that has 250 pages, but it's 200 pages of daily affirmations and writing prompts. There's a, a way you can journey into the book about yourself, write a letter to yourself at 10 years old. What would you say to yourself two years from now? You know, there's a section that shows how to do a resume, how to write a business plan, how to do a book outline, how to write stories, uh, poetic elements, allegory, simile, alliteration, what those are, how to put them together. You know, so I wanted something that was different than what you could find at Walmart. And something that once you buy this journal, like you shouldn't need another journal for the rest of the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not guaranteeing it. And Amazon has a return policy for a reason, but <laughs> I'm just telling you that I think this journal will be epic. Now I believe in journal so much. It's very simple. Anyone who subscribed to me or email me or DM me and say, listen, I love the journal. I don't want to pay 30 bucks or 20 bucks. I'll email you the PDF, you know, that has the, the chapter outlines and the affirmations. Have fun with it. If you want to print 200 pages, that's on you. But I'll give you the, the book, the journal, so you can actually get your writing life together. That's not a problem. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. Because that was, you know, for all my listeners, I'm sure they better take advantage of it. Come on now. <laughs> life is a breeze. All you got to do is sail in it. Let's get it. Mm, I like that. So, yeah. So, man, Dwight. Thank you so much. Please uh, stay on for a little bit. I'm going to do my outro and everything like that, but stay on. So, everybody, if you got... Oh, matter of fact, before I even do that, where else could everybody find you? Oh, come on now. Let's get it. <laughs> Dwight Thompson, <laughs> a.k.a. The Right Warrior. On all platforms, it is The Right Warrior. W-R-I-T-E-W-A-R-R-I-O-R. -R and my SEO and search box optimization is pretty good. So if you just type in my name, it'll come up. Now, if you see an older looking, dignified looking white man with white hair, obviously that's not me. That's the television evangelist, Dwight Thompson. Uh, any book that you find that is out there, has my name on it, is usually from me. It's in Goodreads and so forth. On any social media platform, we're talking about fan base, Bego. Clubhouse, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Tumblr, The Right War in all platforms. Just tap in. Uh, DM me if you have a conversation you want to have about publishing, poetry, and purpose. I'm the guy. I'm also on OWL as an OWL ambassador, which is a software company based out of Boca Raton down here in South Florida. And they're basically a telephone-oriented subject matter expert cool so i'm on owl a couple hours a day also on wisdom if you have not downloaded the wisdom app check it out it's pretty cool you can uh, ask a question and the wisdom community which is a wide network of folks who just respond back to your question so sometimes you'll leave a question and come back next week there's like five different responses from five different people of different fields and backgrounds so it's fantastic and just tap in with me uh even the talk the ticky talk I'm there also, you know, but it's TikTok is a different creature altogether. But tap in, ask a question. We do a Saturday's uh, writing sprint and poetry book club. I try to host every now and then a LinkedIn audio room where we showcase authors, other authors and their books and their writing process. And I'm always available for podcast guesting and virtual poetry coffee houses. You know, we bring the fuego every single time. Because what we do is for Christ, and only what we do for Christ will last. The rest just is. 
You say you bring the fuego every time. The fuego. Love it. Love Esta. it. Love it. Love it. Esta. <laughs> the fuego. Let's get the it. The fuego. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. man. Dwight, it was a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much. Everybody, if you got anything out of this, please make sure you like, subscribe, uh, and please share. Because I, I think we dived into a lot today. And there is no reason that, you know, somebody can't walk away without either A, feeling better about themselves, or B, even take an opportunity to just sit down and think and be in their thoughts and describe something around the room just to kind of bring back their, their self and their inner peace. So, again, thank you, everybody. Y'all be safe. Mount Peace. Want to find my outro. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go.